It is sitting down, but I'm going to do it so y'all can see it. So, you know, all of us, you know, all of us have broken lives. You know, our lives, the problems in our life come from the fact that we live in a broken world surrounded by broken people and broken relationships. And, um, you know, we all, all try to fix the pain of our brokenness in different ways. You know, like for some people, maybe it's like drugs and alcohol, maybe it's success, your job status, um, you know, overeating, oversleeping. We all have our thing that we want run to to try to fix the pain of that brokenness. And, you know, like even abortion, like it'll fix your immediate problem. Like you won't be pregnant anymore. You won't have the stress of like, how am I going to do it? But often what happens is that... Um, when we, when we try to fix our lives on our own and the pain, we often add more brokenness to what all, we already have. But that um, the pain's not always a bad thing because oftentimes God will use this, like when we're in a crisis, like you're in, you just, you're like, I don't know where to go. He uses to get our attention to let us know that he has more for us than what we're living. Um, in fact, the Bible tells us that he has a, a total different plan altogether for our lives because you know, actually, when God created the world, He created it with with a design. It was a perfect design where all things work together in perfect harmony and relationships. And God has a, a design for our life with our families, um, marriage, our children. Um, but the problem is, um, I just lost my train of thought. How many lost my train of thought? Yeah, sin leads to brokenness. Sin, sin leads to brokenness. Yeah, okay, oh yeah. So, yeah, um, and we see that um, in in the Bible. Like, have, you, have you ever heard the story of Adam and Eve? Have you ever read that story? What we see there is that... Um, you know, we see God told them, you know, this is how, we see God gave them a design, like, this is how I want you to live. But instead, um, they said, he said, if you, if you um, live according to my design, it's good, you'll flourish. But if you live, um, if you eat the fruit of that tree, then it will be, um, you, you will die. You will be separated from me. So what they chose is they were like, I want to do what I want to do instead of trusting what God had told them to do. So we see that their sin, the their sin leads to brokenness, and sin is um, sin is anything we do um, that doesn't place God, and it's um, not it's it's when we choose to live into our own mind according to His design. Um, so we see the sin leads to brokenness, um, and like when you look at this picture, which which one looks more appealing to you, like like here God's design or our brokenness? Yeah, this looks better, right? And um, the problem is, like, we're all born over here in this broken world. Like, we're just like Adam and Eve. We come out when we're born, we come out with our fists out of God. Like, I want to live how I want to live according to His design. And um, even if I, like, this looks better, if I try to get back to God's design on my own, I can't. Um, the barrier, which I mentioned before, is my sin. Um, because I'm a sinful person, I don't obey God. Um, I can't get back to Him. On my own because he's holy. He's totally other than I am. So I can't get back to him on his own, my own, unless God did something that the, to, to make a way for me to get back to him. And what the Bible tells us is that God loved us so much that he provided a way for us to be restored back to his design. And what he did is he, um, he sent his son Jesus, who is fully God. He's fully man. The Bible says we see Jesus, we see God. Um, and what Jesus did that um, we can do, he was sinless. He never sinned. And what happened when he was on the cross is that God took my sin and my brokenness and he put, um, he, he put, it, he put our sin on his son. And his son um, took the punishment that we deserved for our sin and he died in our place. And he died, he was buried. On the third day, he rose again so that we would um, have a way to be brought back to him. And when Jesus was on earth, his message was, repent and believe. And repent means, um, like, I'm walking this way, just like, like, I told you, like, I don't even, I want to live how I want to do it, I want to do according to my own mind. Instead, I drop my fist, I have a change of mind and direction, 
And now, instead of walking my fists up at God, I'm walking like unto him, like I want to live unto you. Jesus was like, he told us to repent and believe, believe in things I trust, that Jesus' death, his burial, and his resurrection is what, what allows me to, um, my sins to be forgiven and to be made right with God. So um, when we do this, when we repent and believe, um, what happens is our, our sins forgiven. It's no longer counted against us. It's not based on any good in ourselves, but on Jesus' good gift, his grace alone. That allows us to come back and to um, recover and pursue God's design for us. And um, when we come back here, what happens is, like I said, it, it doesn't mean that like everything in our life is perfect. You know, it doesn't mean all <coughs> every you know our circumstances are all fixed and all that. But what it means is like our biggest problem is taken care of. I'm, I'm no longer separated from God. God changes our heart. He, he says everything is made new. Where he actually gives us a new heart that wants to pursue his design. And the greatest thing, you know how you were telling me before that you you were so worried that you're going to have to walk alone. When we come back to God and uh, we restore to him by putting our faith in Christ, we're not alone anymore. God says that he will, he will walk with us. You know, I was telling you how God walked with Adam and Eve in the beginning. Actually, the God who created the whole world with his word, he will actually walk with you and help you day by day. And, you know, what you can be assured of is that, you know, as you live according to God's design, you know, you said you weren't sure about the pregnancy, but, um, you know, we see in God's word. That's how we know his designs, his word. He says, like, in Psalm, he's, the Psalms, he says, you know, that he's the one that creates a baby in the womb and that um, he's the one that gives life and it's beautiful. So, you know, if we live according to his design, it's always good for us. Living according to design, it's always the path of flourishing in our lives. And then we know that you know, if I live however I want, according to my own mind, if I sin and live however I want, I know it's always destructive in our in my life. So, um, did you does that um, does that where do you, where do you see yourself in this? The brokenness. Your, yeah, the brokenness. Yeah, and so you know, even more, um, our biggest need, even more than just our circumstances and our life being changed, like you have your pregnancy that's weighing on you. We all have brokenness and burdens that are buried on us, you know, the biggest thing we need is to be restored back to relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Is there anything that's um, keeping you from repenting and putting your faith in Christ today? I just feel like I've done so many things mm. to be separated from Him. Yeah, yeah, and I, that's, how, that's where we all are. We're all over here, but the great thing is that Jesus' forgiveness for us isn't based on anything we've done, but it's based on um, Christ's death for us on the cross, that he has taken all of our sin on himself, and he, he died in our place so that all of those things won't be counted against. It's like the slate is wiped clean, and we're allowed to, if we, as we turn from our sin and live for ourselves and put our trust in him, we can, um, all that's taken, it's all, it's all light clean, and we can come back to him. And as, and as we study his word, you know, we can um, we can begin to recover and pursue that the beautiful design that He has for us. And he promises He will help you as you walk on this journey, and we want to help you. Too. We're going to be with you, you know, every step of the way. Okay. Good. <laughs> now, what did uh, what did they just hear? What did you just hear? Yeah, her gospel, and um, we're going to learn something real similar. This it was it, it, what Jenny was sharing. These things that they share at work. Uh, Jenny and Kenzie work together, talking and sharing. They share a lot of this same uh, same stuff that you share now. Um, we're going to learn what's called three circles. Jenny's got two circles, so I'm going to put another circle there so that three circles. But it's real similar to what we're going to do. Uh, although what we, we're doing is going to be a little bit shorter. Um, than that, but <laughs> some people say, well, why would you, um, why don't we just learn the gospel and then learn how to converse with people to where we can share the gospel? Well, that's what we're, that's what we're going to do. We're going to practice uh, learning how to share the gospel, and our desire is to get to a place where we're not, we don't have something memorized that's canned, but that we just converse. But what happens 
How many of you uh, raise your hand saying, man, I feel really comfortable. No, no don't raise your hand. <laughs> but, uh, I would say many of us in this room would say, I don't feel real, real comfortable sharing the gospel. So what we're trying to do in, in these next few months is help us get more comfortable where we, we know the gospel, we can articulate the gospel, and we're comfortable sharing it. Now, there's not many times, I share the gospel quite a bit, and there's not a lot of times that I share the gospel that I don't have my heart going. When I share the gospel, I can share the gospel rather easily, but I get nervous sometimes, more times than not. Heartbeats. Yeah. And as I'm talking, I'm praying, I'm thinking, wow, this is a pretty big deal. I'm sharing the gospel that could possibly change a person's life. This person possibly doesn't know the Lord. They're separated from the Lord. This is something that maybe could make a big difference in their life for all eternity. So um, what we're going to do is, is we're going to learn uh, the three circles to learn how to share the gospel. So um, think about the gospel. What does the word gospel mean? Yeah, good news. Before the New Testament... The word gospel was used in reference to a herald or a messenger that was delivering a message of victory to his home country. Think about it. No internet, no, no telephone, no email, no telegraph, no way of communicating whatsoever, no postal service even, Brian Billings. Um, and so how are you going to get news that, okay, our, our nation is at war, and you've got to get news, and that news is either, okay, you're in bondage for the rest of your life, or we just had victory, and we're, and we're going to experience freedom. And so the person that's bringing news of victory and freedom, they are bringing gospel news, good news. So, um, yeah, the word gospel actually means good news. And, and we see this term... A lot in the New Testament. How many times do you think that the word gospel is used in the New Testament? Just a, a wild gander. <coughs> gander means a guess. Young people. <laughs> no, not that many. That's a good. That's good though. We get it started. Not that many. No, not that many. <laughs> right, 90, 90, 96 times. But then there's other words. <laughs> 96. Uh, there's other words that are used that. Uh, are synonyms to uh, the gospel. Like, oh, man, look at that. Look at this. <laughs> I don't know what happened here. Um, well, a lot of hair you got there. Yeah, back in the day. Uh, I don't know That was good news. Do <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh, maybe. <laughs> uh, sorry. It's been working for the last uh, three hours. I'm not sure why it's gone, but it hasn't been on that screen. I've got the tired ones. All right, we're going to go ahead. Um, there's other words. Word of truth. Uh, word of God. I say four or five. Message of the cross, first Corinthians one eighteen. Word of truth, James chapter one verse eighteen. They're they're all synonyms. So you got gospel being used a lot of times, but there's a lot of other words that's not specifically the gospel, but they mean the same thing. We have how many gospels do we have in the New Testament? Four. Four, yeah. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. There's four. Gospels in the New Testament. But these aren't the gospel, the good news, but they contain the good news. What about this? Is this is this the gospel? Trick question. Well, it contains the gospel. It's the Bible. It's, it, it's the story of God's uh, redeeming man, sinful man, to himself through the work of his uh, sacrifice, the old covenant, his son, new covenant. 
but but it it tells us what the gospel is. How would you define the gospel? And Jenny sharing this with Mackenzie, who was, who, you know, this total package, she got a lot of information. But how would you <clears throat> define the gospel? God, our sins providing eternal life. Good. Say it again. God, our sins providing eternal life. Yeah, that's good. Some acronym there. Somebody else. Why we were so sinners, Christ died for us, and that's what we were doing. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's really good. Somebody else.
That is no gospel at all. Thank you. You have to teach me how you fix that. Oh, I did it. Oh, I love to speak. Uh, um, there it is right there. Alright. Um, you, you might define the gospel, you know, we do this a lot with a lot of different things, by saying what it's not. What is the gospel? You say what it's not. The gospel is not that there's a God in heaven who wants you to have everything good and wants you to be wealthy, healthy, and wise. And he doesn't want you to go through any hardships whatsoever. That is not the gospel. The gospel is not the idea that if I do a lot of good stuff, God is going to be good to me. And when bad things happen to me, it's because I'm not being good enough to God. That is not the gospel. The gospel is not me doing something for God so He'll do something good for me. That is not the gospel. Most people would probably, that's the default mode. They go to one of those three scenarios, ideas. That's their default mode. Or that God loves us so much that when we die, we go to heaven. That's it. The gospel is not that, hey, all roads lead to heaven, baby. We all going to end up there anyway. Yeah, that's good. Anybody else? I think for me in my experience, um, to preach the gospel or to get to evangelize the people in today's world, mm -hmm. you're going to have to you're going to have to know some apologetics too because to get across at home, unless they're already broken and they're already down on their count, most yeah. people are, I'm a good person. That's the first thing that comes out of my mouth. Yeah. If you're going to go, if you die today, where do you think you'd go? And they'll go to heaven. Well, why do you think that? Because I'm a good person. And you have to be able to counter that. Yeah. And I think that's a big thing in today's world too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, everybody thinks they're a good person. We're actually going to learn how to refute that uh, in a sweet, gracious, loving way. Um, Turn to 1 Corinthians 15. It's, uh, there's a lot of places we could go and study. A lot of texts we could study of what is the gospel. But because it's Resurrection Week, it's Holy Week, and Easter is Sunday, we're going to look at 1 Corinthians 15. We're talking about the resurrection of Jesus. It's a great passage. Um, if we're going to study uh, a text, we have to know uh, who wrote it. or we need, It's good to know who wrote it. Who wrote this, this letter? Yeah, Paul wrote who to write it to. Okay. Yeah, the church in Corinth. What's the, tell me a little bit of a story about that. He started when did he started that the church. Paul's a church planner. He started the church on a second missionary journey, and he's writing this letter uh, from Ephesus during the third journey. And they've got a lot of trouble, a lot of issues in the church. And the first seven chapters, he's addressing issues that he's heard about in the church. Then from chapters 8 through 16, he's answering their questions they had. Okay. okay. All right, and so we're just going to use these, these uh, we're going to use these um, four questions real quick. We're going to run through this kind of quickly. But let's read uh, 1 Corinthians 15. If you don't have a Bible, maybe somebody beside you does have a Bible. You may need a Bible or you, if you might see somebody beside you. It's always good. Uh, no, uh, go ahead. Uh, before we leave the verse, it's up there. Uh -huh. Something that uh, I've had a couple of times when you're, if you're ever talking to a Mormon, uh -huh. verse 8 is written very specifically, I think, for them. I mean, I'm sure it applies to others, too. Yeah. But where it says, because they say this angel from heaven gave them this extra revelation in the Book of Mormon. Yeah. So, it says if we or an angel from heaven ever preach something different. Yeah. That's yeah. Good. So that, that is, just remember. Yeah. Yeah, you're like, ah, I think that's a bad thing. I don't think we can really right. have so yeah. that, that's a yeah. good time. Galatians 1 8, good. Yeah. Let's read this. So, Paul's writing this, and what he's just done in context, chapter 14, is uh, talking about orderly worship and using your gifts. 
Okay, so jumping right into that again, he's answering questions about uh, you know things that they want to know about, and it's about the resurrection. Uh, the resurrection has already occurred. What's the resurrection going to look like? And so he's answering that question. So maybe fifteen one through eleven, real quickly. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers at one time, most of them are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he also appeared to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preach and so you believe. Okay. Now we're just going to we're going to walk through here a little bit of time, and we're going to put it in our word. What's the text say? It's using those four inductive Bible study questions that, that uh, we used going through First Peter. All right, verse one and two. Put that in your own words. Skim through it again. Let's just put it in your own words real quick. <laughs> Basically, he says, I've already told you this, and I'm going to tell you again. Yeah, I told you. I'm your spiritual dad. You remember I talked this to you a long time ago, or not too long ago, but, you know, a few years ago. And, and what did they do when they heard this, this gospel? When they heard this, uh, the gospel, what did they do with it? They received it, yeah. You received it. And when you stand, and when you are being saved, okay, so Paul wrote this. Or he, he's writing this, reminding him, hey, I shared the gospel with you, and you've received it, this gospel message. You'll find in ministry, one of the things they teach you in, um, in all your discipleship classes is that people that are, uh, get cold uh, real easy, they're, they're not mean people. People that are hot natured and get hot real easily, they have a tendency to be uh, have a tendency. All right, sorry. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Okay. I mean, I'm just saying. That's true or not? I'm sorry about that. Yeah, we got a lot of people in here. Right? We got a couple of them. All right, for now, you're in charge. Make everybody happy. As long as it's not hot. Is it on any of your stuff? Yeah. Okay. All right. I promise I'm not mean. I didn't. All right. So so Paul is hearing this gospel already, but notice this, this, this gospel has to be believed. And not only it has to be believed, you have to persevere and believe. Michael Johnson is a believer, not because she believed as a nine-year-old at, at her home in Southern Tennessee. She's a believer because she believed as a nine-year-old in Summerville, Tennessee, but she still believes that message right now. Does that make sense? So it's not either or it's both ain't. But if you're not if you're not right now trusting, I don't care if your daddy was a preacher. I don't, if you're not believing that message right now, you're not born again. You're not saved. It's a continuing, you know, belief. Right? Who 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 are saved people? Saved people are those that persevere in their faith. Can I ask you a question? First yeah. Of all? yeah. Uh, what's the difference in what you were saying is like the continuous, the continuing of your belief is what means you're saying. What about when it comes to spiritual doubt? It, you can doubt and still be saved, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, then what's the difference? If you said, if I still believe today, you just, that at the end of your doubt, you doubt, know? doubt, like, doubt. I don't know, there's a guy. I don't think, the, I don't think, the, I don't think the gospel is true. Is that what you No, doubt more like your salvation, not that God is true. Okay. I'm yeah, like trusting, like it's a it's a it's a trust. It is a trust. Like God, I do believe this message. I do believe that Jesus did die on the cross for me. I do believe that He and there is a there is a, somewhere I don't know what that is. Where that line is, where you cross like, Yeah, you're not believing. <coughs> yeah, I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. <coughs> Can you doubt? Yeah, we all doubt. Who who, who not doubt? Yeah, we're all doubt at times because of our sin. 
sin because of whatever. Because of personality, because of the events that happen in life. But yeah, I, I'm not I mean, sure. we all Look, sin, but does our behavior say that we're not a believer? Yeah, it, it, well, well, our, 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 well, our behavior, anytime we blow it and rebellious against the Lord, it's showing that, hey, there's something not right. It's evidence that something's a, a, a right, something's not right. All right, look at verse 3 and 4. We don't, we gotta, we gotta move on. 3 and 4. Uh, 3 and 4. Put, put that in your own words. <clears throat> For I relate to you what was related to me that Christ fulfilled specific prophecies in accordance yeah. with scriptures. Yeah. Yeah. He's reminding them of the gospel, the specifics of the gospel here. And what is that? Christ died for our sins, he was buried, and he raised on the third day. Yeah, all according to, and that's exactly what, and by saying according to scripture, what's in that other words? Paraphrasing that. Just like he said it would happen. Yeah. Yeah. What are the scriptures here? Old Testament. Yeah, the Old Testament. Yes. Yeah. We think about Old Testament scriptures that teach us about Christ. What comes to mind? Isaiah. Hmm? Somebody say something? Prophecy. Yeah. Isaiah 53. Old Testament prophecies that tell us that Jesus, he said according to the scripture, just like I said, what Old Testament scriptures come to mind? Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53, yeah. Yeah, yeah, is, yeah of course. The suffering servant passage. Yeah. Anything else? That was, that was the one that I expected everybody to say. That's the one that comes to my mind. All right. Isaiah 53. Yes. Yeah. yeah, this is this is the this is the gospel. In real pointed, simple terms. Christ died for our sins, buried, was raised on the third day. He didn't just die, but he died and he rose. According to the scriptures. And we see that. Acts, uh, Acts 2. Peter is preaching. This is the sermon of Pentecost, and he's quoting from the Psalms. For David says, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore, my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope. For you, when I abandon my soul to Hades, or let your holy one see corruption. What is that? It's a prophecy saying that he'll rise from the dead. Great for this week. It's very great for you. He's quoting Psalm 1610 there. All right, 5 through 8. Look at verse 5 through 8. Put that in your own words. Oh, let's get some. some. Yeah. <laughs> How do we know the resurrection really occurred? It said that he he won't he, yeah that he rose on the third day, and then he tells us in verses five through eight how we know that was true. How do you know that was true? Eyewitness. Yeah. And most of them still alive. <laughs> Morgan was here Sunday. I can prove it. Morgan's not in here. Morgan was here Sunday morning. How can I prove it? How many saw a morbid on Sunday morning? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's so obvious, right? Yeah, okay. Who, who, saw, who saw the resurrected Lord? More than 500 people. Peter and the disciples. Yeah, yeah. The apostles. Yeah, he names the apostles. He names them twice. Here, it seems like. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then he, then he, not just, yeah, but then Paul as well. When, when, when did he appear to Paul? Yeah, right. Yeah, last. That's right. Last. That's why I was, yeah, two reasons. I think that reason, but also plays if he persecuted the church. He's like, yeah, I believe Paul the apostle, right? But he did. He did see the Lord. The Lord spoke to him and gave him a, a ministry. All right, 9 to 11. Put that in your words. 
false testimony. Yeah. So you shouldn't be an apostle. Yeah. I shouldn't be an I'm the least qualified. Yes. But, verse 10. God's grace. By the grace of God. I am what I am. Whether it be, then it was I or they, so we preach and you, and so you believe. But it's Paul, the other apostles, whoever preached the gospel to them, still the gospel, and they, they heard it and they believed. All right, what's the main point of all this? You say, okay, in a sentence or two, what's the main point of this text? Keep in mind the context. It will help you put that together right People ask about the resurrection. Did it already occur? Is it not going to occur? So what's the main point here? Resurrection of the dead. He's making his case for the resurrection of Christ before he goes on to tell them that they shouldn't be preaching that the resurrection isn't going to happen. Yeah. He reminds them of the gospel. And one aspect of that is the resurrection. <laughs> proof of the resurrection? What's proof of the resurrection according to this text? What do we love? Eyewitnesses. Y'all talk about Old Testament scriptures and the Apostle Paul himself. His changed life. I mean, Paul at the end is saying, hey, I was a piece of junk. This is what the Lord did for me. That's what he's saying. Evidence of the resurrection, he changed my life. Alright? Anything else? Main point? We all I told you this before. We always do that. And the men would always share because we were the teachers, you know, the group. When we were overseas, and the women would tell us, we're like, oh yeah, that's better than we had. Alright, what's it teach about the Lord? Third question. What's this teach about God? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Do what? Yeah. Not too far away. Yeah, that's good. And that's part of maybe application too. What else? What's the scripture say? He keeps his word. He said he was going to be buried. Where is that? Uh, verse four. So he's yeah. Buried and he's raised on the third day. Good. He keeps his word. Good. He's trustworthy. He keeps his word. He does what he says to do. What else? The grace of God is powerful. Verse ten. Yeah, sometimes it's something obvious thing to admit. Jesus died. Jesus was buried. Jesus, the Son of God, was resurrected. Yeah, he appeared to the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, appeared to a lot of people. They saw him. by the grace of God I am what I am God preserving him and pushing him to where he needs to be because yes I mean without God I mean, I mean I'm like I'm down a completely different path than what it was originally yeah good alright what do we do with this what's application just fix that out trust what trust God trust God believe not believe the gospel hey Believe the gospel. <coughs> Keep believing the gospel. <coughs> I don't care if Brian Lindley knows a lot of Bible and can preach. It doesn't matter if he's not continually trusting the gospel. I don't care if Bobby Dotson, we saw him radically change. We've seen his life change. He talks about the Lord. He gets, the big rascal gets all teared up. It doesn't matter if he does Tomorrow, from tomorrow, from today on, he just doesn't trust. What's another application? Reject false gospels. Reject false gospels. Good. We're missing one. Why? Right, we're sharing. together. Huh? We're all working together. Yeah. Yeah. What else? Also believe scripture because scripture pointed to Christ 
from the Old Testament as well. Yeah, we need to read the scriptures. We we know the scriptures. Do I? His old pastor's word. Old pastor's word, yeah. I was wondering how to say this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I was going to say that. Jake, we thought that one was understood. Yeah, Jake was going to say that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I said obvious. You know, you miss the obvious sometimes. Yeah, we have to share. We need to share the gospel. Because what's the gospel do? Results in people being saved. Yeah, we all, all of us here, and I don't know who's born again or who's not, you know, but everybody here that's born again is born again because they heard the gospel. And that's not for nothing. Because he says it's not for, it's not in vain. Yeah. It's not for nothing. There's right. a purpose in it. Yeah, good. So in, our, in regard to our study today, what is the gospel? What do we learn about the gospel? It's a story about Jesus dying for sinners and Rise from the dead, all according to the scriptures. This is the gospel that must be believed. You got you have children, you have spouses, you have friends, you have parents, you have aunts and uncles and grandmothers and grandfathers, you have neighbors. This gospel must be believed by your neighbors and your children and your spouses and your friends and your co-workers and your boss and your employees. It has to be. That's why we're doing evangelism training. Why do we share? Why do we share the gospel? Where? Make Where? Yeah, go you there for teach all nations by the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, etc. Etc. You were doing so well. <laughs> <laughs> you can't use you can't use etc. You got no, that's great. Right. Good listen. Uh, yeah, Matthew twenty-eight, great commission. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. We're commanded to share the gospel. The disciples, Jesus said to send into heaven. Y'all know what that was like? We used to play this game in China. It's what if? And we get all the Chinese students and friends and stuff and play what if? And they always, it was just pure, real fun. I'm going say, what if you could witness anything, any event in history, what would it be? And all these Chinese people, they're always, it's always something about China. Zhongguo, which is China, um, it means the middle kingdom, like the center of the world. <laughs> we're all so they, they're taught, it's all about China, all about China. Like, man, Say something about something else besides something in China. And old Ted, one lot sure, is a guy we we spent seven years with. Uh, he would say stuff like, oh, I'd like to see the resurrected Lord. <laughs> you know? uh, but think about the, the I think about the ascension. It's like you know, that's you know, Jesus prepared his disciples. We're talking about this Friday, we're talking about Sunday too. He prepared his knucklehead disciples for him leaving. He's leaving these guys behind to do this work, which is incredible. It's great hope for us. And he just. But right before that, he says, Go to all the nations and, and, and preach the gospel. Make disciples. Baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And guess what? It's going to be real good. It's going to be okay. I'm fixing to leave this place. I mean, guess what? I'm going to be with you. So you keep your tail in Jerusalem. And the Holy Spirit's going to come and empower you and fill you. So, yeah. So I can empower you, go with you. Yeah. Why do we share the gospel? We're commanded to. Why do we share the gospel? Somebody, Romans 1 16, 17, real quick. Romans 1, 16, 17. So, for I am not ashamed of this good news about Christ. It is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes, the Jew first and also the Gentile. This good news tells us how God makes us right in his sight. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. As the scriptures say, it is through faith that a righteous person has life. Okay. Look at look at real quickly, Jamie, 10, 17. Romans 10, 17. Real quickly. And if, you, you, if you're trying to get notes down and stuff and you're frustrated, if somebody you're really frustrated, uh, I'll see you every note. Every note I ever have, I'll see you. You just have to ask. Uh, 10, 17. So faith comes from hearing, that is, hearing the good news about Christ. Yeah. 
Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of Christ. Why do we share the gospel? Because that's the only way people will be saved. That's it. We said before, it must be believed by whoever you thinking about on this planet. They have to believe the gospel. And the gospel is, is the, the power of God. And they can only be saved if they hear the gospel. We have to get the gospel right. Because that is how they are saved. Do you believe that? Do you believe it? Do we love our neighbor if we don't? Yeah, good question. Yeah. <laughs> I don't love my neighbor enough. That's why I don't share enough. That's why I don't share. Yeah, it's going to get real in just a second. 2 Thessalonians 1, 5 through 12. Anybody have that? Somebody different? Find it. Bible drill. We've got to do some Bible drill. We haven't done that stuff in a long time. Do Bible drill. 2 Thessalonians 1, 5 through 12. You read it, read it real loud. Oh, go ahead. Okay, this right. is the evidence of the righteous judgment. Okay, okay. Uh, judgment of God that you may be considered worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are also suffering. Indeed, God considers it just to it just to repay the affliction of those who afflict you and to grant relief to you who are afflicted as well as to us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels and a flaming fire inflicting vengeance on those who do not know God. I like that language? Flaming fire inflicting vengeance. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Talking about the persecute they're they're persecuted, right? Mm-hmm. They're being persecuted. It's, 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 they're gonna get theirs. God's just. I don't know if I want to do that. Maybe I need to share the gospel with these people. Flame and fire, then, yeah, there's just God and there's punishment, there's hell. That's where lost people go. The Jonah syndrome. Yeah, 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 yeah. And sometimes we're like that too, you know. Um, yeah, they, lost people go to hell. That's why we share the gospel because, hey, you're. Parents, grandparents, kids, friends, everybody. I mean, we're all on the way road to hell. Why else do we share the gospel? I've shared this a bunch. We need a reminder. Yeah, we need a reminder. First Timothy uh, 1. Uh, turn, turn there with First Timothy real quick. Real quick, real quick. First Timothy, if you don't know where it is, go to the front, look at the table of contents, and, and it'll tell you the page number. That's easier. No, that's what we do. I do it too. When I get to minor prophets, I'm flipping, and I'm like, "Why? I know I've done past it three times back in the day." Okay, I'm flipping with that. First Timothy one twelve. I thank Him who has given me strength, Christ Jesus our Lord, because He judged me faithful, appointed me to His service. Though formerly I was a blasphemer, <coughs> persecutor, and insolent opponent, but I received mercy because I acted ignorantly. I was ignorant. Fool that didn't believe. <laughs> and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the love, the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The same is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance. That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the foremost. We've heard that already. Yes. It's, there's a lot of repetition in the Bible. And in not this, this is Paul's letter, we've been reading Paul. But Peter says the same thing, he says it a little different. Just like Elaine would say something, I would say something, it's it, we're, Speaking the truth and saying the same thing, but we just word it a little different. But I receive mercy for this reason that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who are to believe in him for eternal life. And what does Paul do? He does the same thing. He shares his story, and in his heart, in his mind, the same thing happens when we share a story. What's verse 17 say? It's just so much more helpful if you read, turn the scriptures and look at it. What's verse 17 say? Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, the honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Yeah. Paul, Paul <coughs> he probably, is he writing this with his own hand? <laughs> he did most of them. He did a few of them. Is he, is he, he have a secretary writing this? You think? You might know. That's not a rhetorical question. Really, I asked him. Hey, I think you sit there. 
he's, he's telling that, and then they're, they're riding out, and he goes like this. He's just, whoo! <laughs> 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 what, what happened there? Yeah, he, he's sharing his story, and what's he do? Verse 17. He shared his story, and he does the same thing that we would do if we shared our story. Yeah. Elise shares her story, she's going to do the same thing. I've told you this a bunch of times. Some of you get tired of hearing these stories, but they're just so true. Some of you are new and you think they're fresh. They're not. They're always a lot of stuff. So. <laughs> Jenny and I in China, we had what's called China days. What's that mean? Huh? Bad day. I hate this place. I'm tired of these people. I'm tired of this. All of, everything about it. Why in the world not coming? What have I done? I could be at the lake. I had a China day. The only time I, I, I was, I felt like I was made to be in China. I don't know why I'm in Tuba County. I learned the language. I got where I teach the Bible. I love it. I'm going to spend the rest of my day. I didn't have a, as many China days as most people. But the only time I had it, mom and dad would say, yeah, we're taking CJ, we're going to the lake. And I looked over my kids. Playing with a stick. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. There was nothing to do where we lived. We lived in a third world country. All you do is live. We played sticks. We played hide and seek. And I was the, they thought I was the coolest dad in the whole wide world. Because I'd come home every day and take the kids out. We, all, all the kids in our complex, there's a thousand families in our complex. Big complex. We would play. But I, I would get so, ugh. Mom and Dad tell me they're going to lay. Only because I didn't, didn't take seats that way. No. But I was thinking, looking over my kids, thinking, ugh. What are we going to do for fun? They didn't know any different. They were having time. They were living life, you know. But I would get in this fun. And so, uh, and it may not be because of that. It may be because of something else. But we would tell each other, hey, you need to go and share the gospel with somebody. 800,000 people. Go find one. Share the gospel. Because you're in a bad mood and you're in a funk and you need to get out of it. And sometimes it was me. And sometimes it was Jenny. Jenny come back. Nothing changed in her life. None of the circumstances changed at all. But she comes back. Guess what? Different perspective on life. Life's actually good. Three hours ago, I was ready to be done with this. And my goodness, life is so good now. What changed? Yeah, her perspective, because that's what happens when you share your story, when you share the gospel, you're reminded of what God's done for you. Some of you, look at me, look at me. Some of you need to share the gospel because your life's kind of crappy right now. And some of you, straight up, you gotta, you've been dealt with bad hands. It's not out from under the sovereignty of God. God's using it. But some of you need to be just probably like, I need to share the gospel with somebody. Make life more bearable. Then that's why we share the gospel. Make your day. Remind you why you're created. But remind you what Christ done for you. Remind you how you, He loves you so much. Remind you of His grace and mercy. I should have did. I should have did the other way. I should have been on that. that why are why would we not share? And the list is really long. I've got really long with it. And it's not from I'm not saying why you don't share, I'm saying why I don't share. <clears throat> Alright, come on. Why don't we share? Fear. Fear of what? Rejection. Fear of man. Yeah, fear of man. Fear of man means what? Pride. Pride. Yeah, you care more about what people. Yeah. God, God, real little. And people, bro, I'm saying that. God's real little, and people are big. That's what happens. Hey, hey, look. God becomes real small in our thinking, in our mind. And people are really, really big. God's not very important. And people are real, real important to us. You say, yeah, I fear man. I think we, we all struggle. If you don't struggle with fear man, tell me about it. Tell me how you escape it. 
Yeah. We fear what people think. We fear what they're going to say. We fear what how they're going to respond. You know, most people, there's some terrible people in the world. You ever met any? There's some terrible people in the world. Like mean, like mean, vindictive, just nasty, wicked folks. I'm an extra. I talk to a lot of people. Uh, I talk to a lot of people. I don't. Occasionally, you'll, you'll, turn, you'll meet a jerk face person who's really rude and stupid. More times than not, people are actually conversed with you. Now, they may not agree with you, but around here, most people will tell you that they're good people going to heaven. And, yeah, they love the Lord too. And wait for you. <coughs> what, what, why else do we not show God? The list is really long. My biggest thing is like, I'm afraid I won't be able to answer one of their questions. Yeah, they're going to ask me something that I don't know. And what's really crazy is when parents tell me this. Listen to me. Parents, don't come to me and say, well, I don't really know. I'm kind of, I want you to talk to my son or daughter. They're six. Well, they're going to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> we, hey, the preacher, the preacher said to set us up for that over the last 50 years. We're very clergy focused. And I get sometimes there's something going on. Hey, I'd like for you to talk to them about, before we baptize anybody, we're going to talk to them anyway, right? But you know, we're afraid, and I get too. Yeah, it don't matter how much you know about the Bible, you still will, sometimes you're going to be insecure about it. They, they're going to ask me something or say something or stop me. They're going to have some reason why they don't believe it. I'm going to be sitting there going, hmm. Yeah, what other reason? Why do I have some issue? I'll give you an example. I bought one of those Jesus crown chads that goes in the back of the truck. Yeah. You know, stick your Jesus. And I never put it up because I know I every day I do something yeah. that wouldn't reflect me on yeah. Jesus. Yeah. And I don't know what the best thing to do, put it up there and just deal with it or don't put it up there. I, I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's no, good. How we act. Yeah, yeah. What else? Real quickly, what else? We're over time. I'm sorry. What else? I think I'm too busy. I think I'm too busy. I don't have enough time. So I start a conversation that I want to start in. We're not interruptible. That's, I'm telling you, that's my biggest thing. We, we, I'm not interruptible. We live in China. It's a third world country. Nobody's on time for anything. And it was just easy because it's like, what else am I going to do? And do it. There's nothing else to do. There's nothing, nothing else to do. Nothing. I mean, nothing. But it's people, people, and share the God. So we work 24-7. Got a lot done. We live in a culture that forsakes the Ten Commandments, but has and loves the command, but be nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. It, the gospel is offensive. We don't want to be offensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, we should be offensive. We should never offend. The gospel is what offends. But we should be offensive. But yeah, we're scared that, yeah. What else? In a relationship sometimes, like if you, you're afraid that person's going to cut you out of their life. And yeah, what's the consequence going to be? Yeah, you yeah, made damage a relationship. Yeah. Uh, man, how many of you are gifted? Raise your hand if you're gifted in evangelism. <laughs> <laughs> hey, nobody? Hey, hey, listen, there's a, you got a couple people? That probably give it advantage more than that, probably. When I was overseas, we, we people would ask for their gifts. And we had to fill out these, not spiritual gift inventory, but these questionnaire things, and they would come in and say, hey, you're probably getting in the No, I'm not. It's like, yeah, 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 you're, you're, you're all that. I don't really care. I live in this country, and I live in a city of 800,000 people. None of these people have ever heard the gospel. That's what our team, that's what we do. We share the gospel a lot, so it's on the forefront of our mind. I'm not giving the evangelist. I don't see a lot of people say it. Share truth with a lot of people. Love a lot of people. I get you, maybe. But that is that that means that we shouldn't share the gospel. No. Encourage one another and build each other up. Now, is that written to people that are getting kind of gift of encouragement? No, written to everybody. All right. Last last thing. Yeah, real quick. I was sharing last night. I, some of us are old enough to remember when...